So uh, my name is Wang Kang. I come from Alibaba Group as a security researcher. Um, today is a great honor to be on stage to share some of my uh, um, my thoughts and my ideas during my research work. Um, my research focusing on uh, IoT, V2X, and cyber physics systems. So uh, I want to uh, share some of the uh, effective approaches from the open source communities so that uh, we can build up some um, interesting, effective, productive communities in our cyber physics, cyber uh, security community. So uh, basically what I think a researcher should be a sniper as well as, a, as an observer because if you look so hard on something you can miss a lot of other targets but we cannot afford to observe for the whole day so uh, if there is a friendly productive and helpful cybersecurity community watch your back they will be very good so uh, the core value of a community I think according to Mr. Roger from MIT um, it's productive and helpful so what are our problems now basically we are facing the internet of bankruptcy the IOT so uh, we have already seen the bankruptcy of email right um, back in the year 20, uh, 2004 some, some guys are using the technique of bankruptcy of email that ignoring all of the emails later on and just to send every other an email that I'm bankrupted. Please send me another email if you rather need. And furthermore, we are facing the bankruptcy of instant messages and we cannot handle so much of messages now. And we are facing the bankruptcy of read it never. Remember last time you want to save an article for later use and you never read it actually. And the bankruptcy of news, even RSS. Um, the worst part of it is bankruptcy of focus. We cannot focus on a thing for longer than eight or nine seconds. Um, it's basically the intelligence oversupply because uh, our human beings cannot handle so much of information during the past decades. And I am failed and will fail again because we need to be forever online and there are a lot of distractions and push notifications and uh, there are lots of clients with proprietary protocols and even worse there are flooding stickers and flatterers that um, there is no serious and helpful discussions and even worse there is centralized system, all of your data is stored on the IAM servers and no threading, no archives. Um, according to the uh, communication technologies Nyquist theorem, if you want to get the whole picture or an accurate um, sampling of a signal, you have to um, the, the sample rate at least should be double of the signal rate, right? Uh, as for our information handling, it uh, can be learned that if you want to get the whole picture of the research area, you need to be read as much of the information as you can and as fast as you can. And, and there is another uh, interesting thing that um, there are more and more popular AI categorizer that can filter messages for you but uh, in my opinion we should not trust it. We, we should not trust AI categorizer because uh, take this picture if the vertical axis is good news and the, uh, this is a bad news and uh, the AI categorizer will uh, definitely report the good news for you. So uh, you just uh, think I am the best, keep on and ignore the chance of improvement for yourself. So this is basically why we shouldn't trust AI categorizer in my opinion. And according to Dunbar's number, uh, which is a very simple theory that a human being can and only maintain an active connections with at, uh, at most 148 
uh, human beings at the same time. So basically, um, 140, 148 raised to the power of 4.55 is roughly the whole population of the globe. So uh, basically, this is th that is why um, there are a lot of um, hierarchy of reporting by level. But uh, you know, the reporting by level model it has some serious disadvantages because there is information asymmetry, which is a source of the power, right? Um, and furthermore, there are a lot of distractions, and uh, we are facing, we are in the ultimate ultimate war between our users and product managers. And remember, we have the keyboards a hundred years ago, the, the typewriter, the QWERTY keyboards, right? And now we are losing it. We now are having touch screens. We have, once we had very, very fancy, very um, useful shortcuts, but now they give us gestures. And uh, we lose HTML. Um, that everyone can easily deploy an application, but now we have application store and sync async email, and now we have push notification, and we have to be online for hour, and we lose some serious news and productive discussion, and they give us stickers, right? They are thumb up stickers and cats. So we are basically now are the products. Um, according to Time magazine, uh, we now have a shorter, actually I, I now have a shorter attention span than a goldfish. The goldfish has nine seconds of memory and internet connected b human beings only have eight seconds. So uh, this is our problem. And uh, this is a very interesting research that one, uh, one guy used a high speed camera to record your typing and your uh, characters on the screen, so uh, they, they mirrored the input lag. Uh, you can see this, uh, some modern computers are not responsive um, than the um, 20 year old ones. And um, so uh, according to Andy and Bill's law, we, uh, um, our pro users experience are not improved for the past decades. Um, we are still, still, still waiting for the machines instead, instead of the machines waiting for ours serving us. Um, so this is basically the summary of uh, the challenges we are facing. Okay, eight minutes, nice. Uh, so before we want to share the further ideas, I want to give us the conclusions first, so you can um, take this in mind and see the following um, stories. Uh, basically, I want to uh, categorize our members into senior members, regular members, new members, public, and random members. And they have a lot of different behaviors, and they have d different uh, user agents, and all of them should be respective accordingly. And um, we have to use trusted categorizer and uh, uh, some board to bridge the clients together. And uh, um, I have three parts of it. Uh, basically, the first is leave no one behind, bridge everything, and keep everyone raise everything. Um, to achieve this, we need to build something very fast. And um, we uh, wait for everyone, no need, to, no need for them to show up for every, every time. And we have to build a helpful and productive community and we have to rule out some um, toxic behavior. I mean, by, by speaking of uh, toxic, I mean these, um, um, uh, once this behavior appears, it will never come back. So uh, uh, let's, uh, first we want to learn from some of the big names they are facing the same, but the bigger problems, and we, we want to see their solutions. So uh, Linus, uh, Linus, oh, sorry, I should pronounce it as um, um, Linus Torvalds. Um, he is a founder of, uh, he's a father of Linux, right? Uh, he said, only Vimps use take a backup. Railmen just upload their important stuff on FTP and let the rest of the world mirror it. 
And um, the other part of uh, his quote is um, he he raised uh, he don't organize his emails. He just uh, keep everything in one big folder. And I have done some research of uh, his emails in Linux kernel main um, mailing list, and I found that uh, about half of their emails um, for the past uh, 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 20 years um, they are written with Pine or Alpine, the modern version of Pine. Um, according to the hacker ethics uh, written by Chaos Computer Club, there is a quote that says make public data available and uh, protect private data. And uh, this one is uh, the uh, email from uh, the birth of Linux towards uh, the Linux kernel. Remember, you, you can see this. The date is 1991, and uh, the publish place is newsgroupcomp.org.minix. And this one uh, is the modern, uh, the the year 2006. Um, he was discussing his email clients. You can see this from the year 2007. And he is using Alpine, it's modern version, blah, blah, blah. And um, Linus Torvalds is facing the categorizer failure in the year of uh, 2015. That uh, are around 20% of the emails is filtered as a spam. So he's very angry about this because there are a lot of useful patches, a lot of uh, interesting discussions cannot be marked as spam so rudely. Uh, Marisa Mayer, um, she is the former CEO of um, Yahoo, I remember. Um, she said she, he, she gets as many as 700 or to 800 a day of emails and he, she needs something very fast. So she used an application called Pyen and do marathon email catch up sessions up to 14 hours every week. Uh, usually at Saturday or Sunday. So uh, what is Pine? Pine um, is a very old school but uh, very effective email client according to my opinion. Uh, back in the year of 1989, and the Pine was the de facto email client according to this guy from Hacker News um, for many universities. And um, the, the Pine is short for Program for Internet News and Email. And um, remember, you, if you once used the Nano, the best editor ever, <laughs> Nano, GNU Nano, it's basically evolved from the Pico. Pico is the built-in editor of Pine. And uh, this picture is from Slack. Dot Stanford dot edu. Slack is short for Stanford Linear Accelerator Center. It's for, for the physicists. So there are a lot of the servers provide Alpine and uh, of, for the CERN, the uh, MIT, they also provide Alpine or Alpine. Um, Greg KH, uh, he's one of the active maintainers of Linux kernel. Um, uh, during a, uh, 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 he once said he trying to swear off of IRC because he thought it's a great distraction. So this is GKH and our hero Richard Matthew Stallman of GNU Movement. Um, his web, web page said um, I'm uh, he's abandoning cellular phones, and um, the way he's using. Internet is quite interesting because he, if he wants he want to read some web page, he just send an URL link to the server and the server will fetch it and send it back by email to him. Quite old school, huh? And uh, Lambie, the former, former leader of the BN project, and um, he even used email as a get things done style of uh, to-do list. Uh, what he's using is he wrote up some um, scripts, uh, scripts that if you want to put this email and uh, show up after some days, of, uh, for, for example, a week, a week after, you can just uh, um, put this email to a folder name, delayed.7days, and the <coughs> script will 
rotate by each day, and after seven days, the email will show up again. Then you will you will have a more mature thoughts on it, maybe. And Guido Van Rusum, he's the father of uh, Python program, and he said, "I read everything sent to his mailbox, so um, he just reads everything. So it's very uh, interesting." And Donald Knuth, the um, author of uh, Tech, right, and he's uh, a professor of MIT, and he. Uh, is the author of the book TAOCP, The Art of Computer Programming, and uh, he has been a happy man ever since 1990 because he no longer reads emails. Uh, he has a very um, good secretary, wonderful secretary, and filter every incoming emails and print the important stuff for him to read. Um, so uh, this is basically our heroes. Uh, I'd like to show a brief uh, demonstration of the good old days. So this, uh, uh, okay, let me show from the start. So this is a server, a public accessible Unix server called sdf.org, and I will log into it. Um, yes, and we have Alpine. Sorry. Um, there is a lot of uh, um, this is some sort of like the BBS style of the message handling. For example, this one is the NNTP server provided by Linux kernel called. Uh, uh, you can read all of the uh, emails discussions without subscribing to the email mailing list and no, and the best part of it you can read from the very beginning of the discussion um, instead of the um, um, losing some before you subscribe it. For example, this is a wire guard and uh, this one is uh, uh, if you want to read something from ext4 right. The yesterday's mailing list, and uh, uh, imagine if you subscribe to such a kind of the mailing list, you are you are definitely will be bankrupt of email. But uh, I think this is a new the future of um, the community because they want to build up something some sort of pull model instead of the push model. Actually, this is the old school way of messaging handling and security model, right? You get a lot of messages and uh, even like the SGX, the patches, um, uh, yeah, yesterday. And the next thing I want to show you is this is a Gmain, which is a bridge between an NTP and uh, um, RSS and uh, mailing list. If you want to uh, for example, to read something from Debian, um, there is some announce from here. Uh, for example, they are uh, they are electing the new project leader, and uh, this is some of the news slash dot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, three. Okay. And uh, the next thing is uh, the IIOE. This is some sort of the um, Usenet server so still serving. Um, for example, you can find uh, some um, discussions. Oh, it's not very active quite. And Mozilla, Mozilla is st still using, um, like, um, yeah, I remember this platform. They are discussing the uh, development of. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can just uh, reply to it. Uh, you can follow up to the uh, Usenet server, or you can just uh, reply it by email. Oh yeah. Next up is I can see the IETF. IETF provides a public accessible IMAP server, which is very uh, useful. For example. 
um, I have subscribed. Um, actually, it's not subscribed. I can. Uh, I just uh, added as a shortcut. And uh, if you want to read some internet draft announce, you can just uh, access the anonymous IMAP servers. You can see yesterday's message, and uh, you can you can read something very fast. You can forward to your friend, and you can. Okay, uh, no, uh, it's not, the permission is mark it as answered. So uh, the anon anonymous one is not support this one. Okay, confirm. And uh, the best part of Alpine is you can learn by exploring because all of the help will appears at the bottom bar. The other commands you can explore it. So. Uh, and there are some interesting emails during my uh, exploration. For example, this one is the Linux birth mail. Yeah, this one. I can see the headers, right, from Helsinki.fi. And um, he's seeing a lot of, uh, okay, progress. This is, um, and uh, another, another interesting thing is uh, Tim Berners-Lee, the birth of uh, uh, the, the first web browser, you can see is published at Hypertext. And uh, this is his signature. Interestingly, um, after 19 days, the Linux is burst. Right, this is 91. And this it is uh, 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 this one. Oh, yeah. After 19 days, Linux is birthed. Okay, this is uh, basically the uh, demo, uh, a brief tour of the good old days. So, uh, mm -hmm. where is my pointer? So the, um, this is uh, the sdf.org, and uh, um, it's a public server since 1987, I remember. Um, it's very interesting. Maybe you should uh, register one. It's free, as long as you have uh, uh, published uh, an email to the administrators to confirm that you are a human being, and you will get it. Very interesting. And uh, this is some of the discussions, although they are not very uh, active, but uh, you can st still see the um, someone, old, old school men are living there. And the next up, I want to uh, show what we can learn from the designs of internet. Uh, according to the first chairman of IETF, David D. Clark, um, he said, our best success was not computing, but hooking people together. Um, David is now a professor of MIT now. The designs of the internet, um, the inventor of it is Vint Surf. He has three calls that I personally love very much. The first one is the internet is a reflection of our society. Um, if that mirror has a problem, we should not fix the mirror we have to fix the society. And the second one is the, the more we can organize and find and manage information, the more effectively we can function in our modern world. And the third one is information sharing is power. If you do not share your ideas, smart people cannot do anything about them and you will remain anonymous and powerless. So this is basically what uh, the designers of the internet, they are thinking. And uh, the internet design principles, Tim Berners-Lee, he said, he's the father of uh, WWW, um, decentralization and tolerance. And uh, David Clark, um, he published a, a talk in 1992, and after 20 years, he delivered the same talk as, with the same slides, and a lot of the uh, sentences he said in that talk is still working after 20 years, quite awesome. 
is that we reject kings, presidents, and voting, and believe in rough consensus and learning code. This is, this is basically the motto of Internet Engineering Task Force. And um, speaking of Internet, the underlying um, protocol basically is a BGP, the boarding, a border gateway protocol. Uh, the Internet is all about the addressing and routing. So uh, the BGP um, simply advise, advertise network reachability with um, and for, forms neighbor relationships and use metrics to rank them. So what we can learn from the designs of BGP that uh, each member of the uh, communities he, he come up with questions, come up with answers. And uh, if you broadcast your skills and your needs to each other, and the questions, answers, and inspirations will be passed onto you. And um, remember the software, uh, Mathematica. Um, the, the CEO of it is Stephen Wolfram. Recently, he's publishing a blog post about his um, effective approaches during being a remote CEO of uh, Wolfram company. Uh, they even build up a database called Who Knows What database on each profile page of the uh, employees that once one finds some problems, you can search through the, the um, category, the directory of the company and find the right person to ask. And uh, so uh, imagine this is your, you in a community and this is a dumbbells number and 148 rows, and um, you, you don't need so many active users in our community. Imagine there are only 12 active users, and each of them has the ability to remember all of his friends' needs and skills. This community could be a very effective one. So uh, actually, this is... Um, um, like the designs of uh, our network, the access layer, aggregation layer, and backbone layer, right? And uh, speaking of the uh, information handling model, uh, according to nature speaking, na nature language processing, there is speak, retell, and listen. And according to the book of Elements of Style, um, there is writer, reader, and communicator. And uh, according to GNU Radio and open source, um, framework for signal, signal processing, the source, filter, and sync. And according to email designs, they are accept, forward, deliver, and store. And for the IP tables, they are input, output, and forward. And for the MQTT, the IoT protocols, the publisher, broker, and subscriber. And they have tags called topics. Right? And uh, for the Twitter, there's tweet, retweet, and like. Actually. We can learn from the common part of this is we often have a source, a filter, and a sync. Take Twitter, for example, the, the like is basically the sync because the message will end after you press the like button. Actually, uh, Twitter, the, the CEO of Twitter wants to get rid of the like button. Um, note we can get from this page is a pure sync is not very helpful for the community. Uh, this should be avoided. And instead of, instead of private accessible tech notes, we should encourage our members to publish their ideas, their write-ups, and their uh, to some like independent blogs or searchable archives. And each of the discussions should be accessible by uh, for the later members. And this is an um, a code excerpt from the year of 1988. Um, Mark Crispin is the author of IMAP, uh, which is used in the email system. Um, this is very interesting because this part is his actual address, and this part is his email address. But he thinks the email is the internet. This is the ideas or thoughts from the father of uh, IMAP. And so uh, Tim Berners-Lee on the left, he invented the web. And when to surf, he invented, invented the uh, internet. But who invented the email? 
Actually, according to uh, my, uh, my research, this is a quote, and the email is, was never invented. It evolved from very simple beginnings. And the concept of it communicating via email from organization to organization is the um, impetus for the advent of the internet itself. And it's often called the killer application of the internet. So uh, this one, we have already shown you the email from uh, Tim Berners-Lee. And they, so why do people love emails? A lot of the open source communities chose email to collaborate, like the Debian. Uh, actually, a lot of the um, uh, operating, the, the whole office uh, procedure of Debian is running on email and Linux kernel. And in my opinion, um, people love email because um, the the old a uh, good old a uh, good uh, old school hackers because they can choose your own client as long as it speaks the same protocols. And according to this link, the emails wait for you and is push technology and has a power of one to many. And uh, and he's a, uh, it has a very successful but very simple model. Um, we have the subject, actually the subject in my opinion is the abstract, um, likewise in scientific papers. And uh, except for the deliver and store messages and threading, um, this is the public accessible archive of IETF emails. Um, you can just uh, type into your um, interesting, interested group, you can get uh, the, all of the accessible emails by MAP. And uh, for the NNTP or USAT, um, the, the, actually the, it is the satellite, a lot of satellite um, services. Uh, the users will choose the nearest and fastest servers to do the news, and the, the servers will be synced later on. Mm. I think this is some sort of decentralized to some extent, but I think this is very uh, um, fast for messaging handling because users don't need to wait for the message. Uh, machines instead, instead of <coughs> actually the message is waiting for you. Um, this man is a hero of uh, Usenet and he just uh, rescued all of the uh, Usenet archives by the tapes on his wall. And later, these archives of Usenet was imported to Google Groups, so you can search back the Usenet archives, because thanks to Mr. David Weisman. Yeah, Weisman. Um, Gmain.org um, is a bridge for providing the gateway between NNTP, RSS, and mailing list. You can, uh, there's roughly about 30,000 of channels um, that are serving by gmain.org. But I think gmain.org are facing some problems that um, basically the, this site was um, maintained by a single man uh, before. Um, he, he's an active user of GNUs uh, in Emacs. Uh, so um, the Linux kernel maintainers are worrying about this. So uh, a few years ago, they developed a new project called publicinbox.org, so uh, you can use it as a email receiver, the MDA, and all of, all of the emails will be received by this uh, some poor but very um, uh, strong code, and and the best part of it is publicinbox.org. You can simply um, mirror all of the email archives by git pull because um, each of the messages is a git commit. So uh, you clone the REPL, you get the whole mirror of the email archives. And according to them, they are building the push model instead of the, uh, uh, instead of push model, they are building the pull model because um, um, sometimes you don't have to read all of the messages. You just to search for, uh, let me show you this. I fire up a Safari, okay, and uh, lore.kernel 
sorry, it's a bit of small. Wait a minute. That's LKML. If you want to do some research about some, um, for example, you want to read all the e email published by uh, Towards, you can just uh, search it and you can download it a, as a mbox archive. And for example, you can search my, uh, some of my name and uh, a few years ago, there is some, you can easily find all of the discussions and patches from this project and you can clone the whole repo, it's quite useful. The best part of it, it is now served with an NTP. For example, that you can uh, remember if you use W3M, you just uh, type into, sorry, too fast. Uh, you type into this command, you can get access to the email archives of Linux or Linux kernel discussions. So uh, I, I, uh, actually publicinbox.org can be deployed for, um, for your own communities. I think this is a very promising um, project. Um, and for the newbies, the kernelnewbies.org, they provide some very useful links, documentary, document, uh, documents for the newbies. And uh, for the persons that cannot afford reading all of the messages, they provide editorial digest. Remember, we shouldn't trust the uh, commercial uh, categorizer, but instead of the commercial categorizer, we should use editorial digest. For example, this is a news from the source, the lwn.net. Um, they provide a lot of the um, write-ups of news by the human reporters. They read every emails from the open source discussions, and they publish some of the interesting things. I, I call this the editorial digest. Actually, Internet Engineering Task Force, they provide a daily dose. Uh, actually, this is generated by a robot uh, each day. You can find different uh, activities for the IETF. And LLVM, they provide a weekly um, write-up from the editors on the mailing list, on the uh, commits, commits, and news and articles, interesting articles from around the world. And there is uh, even some interesting uh, robots that um, automatically summarize for you, but I haven't tried, tried uh, this. Also, our practice, final part, um, I was a founder of uh, an, an open source community called Tuna. Uh, this basically, basically, Tuna runs an um, open source mirror site in our country. Basically, it's one of the largest open source mirror site. And a part of them, uh, we uh, also, um, roughly, we are wanting to be like the CCC in the Germany. So um, our practice, um, the first one is we want to keep everyone raise everything. So we want to decrease the latency of each operation. We want to keep machines weights for human beings instead of human weights for machines. And the best part of it, we want to um, our members to do database leak style news reading so that uh, you can get the uh, whole picture. Uh, so um, the members, just like, uh, for example, like the sdf.org, we log into a gateway. And um, the uh, information sources, some of them are RSS. So uh, we uh, use feed to XEC to pull them as a mailbox. Because um, if everything is pulled for the real time, then that the human will be waiting for the machine forever. So we fetch the news async by uh, the machines, and the GWENE is um, some of the public RSS, um, like in the 30,000s of the, them, are served in GWENE uh, using an NTP service uh, protocol to fetch to Alpine. And um, s some of our members prefer the RSS readers, so, uh, but um, this part is very important because 
the RSS, RSS readers, we have to feedback to as a new RSS feed that everyone um, pick up the interesting things to publish to a new collection so that um, everyone is a filter instead of a signal sync. Right? Um, for the mailing list, there are uh, providers from the email services and Gmail and public inbox and news groups. Uh, all of them are pre-configured by the system administrators. So uh, we just open a new account for the members, then all things are set up. The next up is leave no one behind and bridge everything. Remember, there are a lot of different senior member, regular member, new, and random members. They have different um, uh, use agents, so uh, we build up board to, as uh, like a switcher to bridge the messages through them, and uh, uh, we also provide editorial digest. Some of them are for the public. Some of them are for the uh, um, random members to catch up. Um, and uh, the most part of uh, the interesting part of it, we uh, the board can be used as a administrators that execute some friendly rules, like the uh, sticker remover and uh, some sort of the um, um, serious um, filter of the community discussions. So uh, for example, um, the, the a lot of thumbs up, they basically are no, um, it's very toxic for a serious community. It's a proof of no work and people will just uh, push the thumb up button and uh, no one will say the interesting things. And uh, the worst part of it is different from the uh, emoji. It's very large stickers, so th it will flood the screen. It's not very good for productive and very good, not good for the helpful. Uh, so a board is better because we can simply, we cannot trust our administrators. We only trust uh, the rules that can be enforced uh, automatically. So um, basically we want to make human beings speak the language of human. Um, in real world, if you want to push this kind of uh, things, rules to a, um, commercial um, products, if you cannot push the product manager, you can, like me, be like a hacker, file a patent and push again. Actually, this is a real patent of mine. <laughs> and uh, speaking of the blog role, and um, this is a surprisingly work method of our members. Each of them are publishing their thoughts on, a, on its independent blog. And we provide a list. Uh, it actually, it's uh, just a, a markdown file served in GitHub. And this is a full list. Everyone can submit a um, pull request. And we have a robot. To, uh, actually, it's uh, Travis. Um, no, not Travis, it's, um, yeah, Travis.ci to build up, compile the uh, list into a single OPML file that uh, you can just uh, sub subscribe to the single OPML file, then everything is uh, subscribed. It surprisingly works, very interesting. And uh, we have uh, organized some weekly up meetup events. Uh, actually, uh, we, we are not uh, getting any fans, but, um, uh, remember, everyone needs a filter, not a sync. So the speaker, local audiences, remote audiences, and async audiences. We want to keep everyone has a outgoing line and incoming line. So um, for the speaker, they can be yelled by the local audiences, and they can also be yelled remotely by the demo crew. Actually, this is a floating comment. Um, common software um, written by, by our members of Tuna. Uh, actually, we run the so software on the speaker's computer. Then the, the comments will be floating on the slides. So uh, the remote audiences will be connected. And um, uh, we use OBS and, uh, uh, to provide the uh, feeds by Nginx RTMP to remote audiences. And for the a local audience is all the sound must be heard. So the poll, we build up something called, actually it's not built up, it's just a combination of some very uh, 
ex uh, very inexpensive um, microphones that we call it the poor man's mic array. So in the, in the discussion room, everyone's sound can be heard by the poor man's mic array and provide to the remote speaker and async audiences. Actually, there is no feedback line for the async audiences. If you, we want to, we have to build some sort of time machine to, for them to <laughs> discuss. Okay, some of my contributions, the last page. Uh -huh. uh, I have uh, been providing some of the patches for Alpine. Uh, some of my, this is my name, some of my name, and some of the uh, public inbox.org, and some of the feed to XE project. So key takeaways, the first is no keep, uh, keep uh, leave no one behind, and we should bridge everything, respect each of the user agents, and consider all members. And newbies friendly, we, and we keep our senior members won't get bored, and we connect remote members. And async is a new thing. We don't have to keep our members to stay online 724. And they meet up with events, so uh, we, we bridge local remote async and speaker together. And uh, Everyone reads everything. To achieve this, we, uh, the first one is we provide accessible archive, so the message will wait for you, and th this part I call is high for the high throughput info handling. The basically is needs low latency and large volume of message handling, and we have to speed up and let machines wait for human and no information symmetry avoid report by level to and provide large volume of them. And uh, trusted categorizers do not trust the commercial categorizers and from the, even for the same group of people, we, we should uh, build up more channels or more discussion groups for them. And uh, we provide editorial digest for those who cannot afford to read, read every message for them. And helpful and productive, we rule out toxic behaviors with a bot and no black hole. Everyone should um, provide feedback. And human routing, we should encourage our members to broadcast the skills and needs so that help will find you and you will find the helps. Okay, thank you. So any questions will be welcome. The process of this information handling is looks to me more like for the tax uh, uh, not tax information, like the news or the email. So you know nowadays the knowledge is shared more and more. Yeah. Yeah, the video. So, the, any thoughts how to use the kind of pro, uh, practice to for the videos? Is it applicable to the video? Uh, I, I, I remember. The information in the YouTube and uh, this kind of information. Yeah. Your question was um, if we can take advantage of the uh, YouTube. I'm, in my opinion, maybe we can grab the uh, automatic generated uh, caption from it. And to do some uh, data mining. <laughs> no, 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 not data mining. I want to, uh, so that people, uh, uh, members can grab uh, the keywords from it. So you will find the right uh, YouTube. Um, and for the tools we are using is OBS, it's an open source tool. Um, actually, um, uh, you, you can bridge, uh, you can set up a lot of the uh, microphones and the um, webcams. And uh, you, you can be a director of your own using OBS to pu and push the uh, stream to YouTube or your self-hosted uh, RTMP um, server. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. Have a good lunch. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>